TikTok is enjoying a massive growth like no Silicon Valley startup ever has. The new social media app, popular among young children, is on its way to surpass Facebook. But TikTok is not an American company. The app is owned by ByteDance, with headquarters in Beijing, China. And as many Chinese companies that can't escape the overseeing shadow of the Chinese government, ByteDance has been shown to engage in aggressive practices to push through the big data monopoly of the Silicon Valley. This video is a summary of TikTok's worst practices greatly uncovered by news outlets and legal investigations. If you clicked on this video, please watch it till the end as that's how YouTube algorithm will suggest it to more people. And of course, please do leave as many likes and comments as you can. Support independent analysis of information age issues by becoming a channel member or joining my Patreon. Your help keeps the critical coverage alive. TikTok had relatively modest beginnings, but in less than two years since its global launch, it quickly became the most downloaded app in the US with 2 billion downloads worldwide. The app's offering is quite simplistic. Make 3 to 15 second long dance or lip syncing videos or 60 second long loops. This feature set attracted mostly young audience, with almost half of TikTok users under the age of 25. This simple format might give you an impression that TikTok is a fair social media platform where everybody has an equal starting point. But you need to peek behind the curtain and look, specifically at TikTok's moderation policies. Several secret documents from Biden's with instructions for TikTok moderators, have been leaked to news outlets. Some of these documents contain guidelines for TikTok mods to suppress posts created by quote, ugly, poor, or disabled people. Moderators were requested to scan videos for disreputable decorations, cracks on the walls in users' homes, slums and rural fields, or dilapidated housing. Curiously, rural, beautiful natural scenery was given an explicit exemption. Other instructions looked at abnormal body shape, ugly facial looks, dwarfism, obvious beer belly, too many wrinkles, or eye disorders. The justification for these moderation rules is that posts made by an attractive or other users deemed undesirable could increase the short-term new user retention rate. The documents describe such videos as much less attractive, not worthy to be recommended to new users, and that poor environment is not that suitable for new users for being less fancy and appealing. Other leaked documents designate fat and queer people special user stack, which deemed them as susceptible to harassment or cyberbullying, based on their physical or mental condition. Moderators were told to determine which users have facial disfigurement, autism or Down syndrome, and apply moderation policies accordingly. As a standard punishment for people put into these categories, TikTok would drastically limit their audience reach. In some cases, their posts would only be visible in their country of upload instead of the global TikTok audience. Other users, like those with disabilities, would have their videos tagged auto R, which would essentially cap their view count at 6 to 10,000. Once reaching this ceiling, their videos would be automatically placed in the not recommended category. The moderation guidelines didn't just end there. Biden's instructed its own employees to create shadow accounts on TikTok, download, quote, nice looking Instagram videos on popular topics, such as hashtag beach girl, and repost them on TikTok to populate the app with more appealing content. When confronted by the intercept on this practice, TikTok's spokesperson said, we did not see that language anywhere in moderation guidelines or trust and safety policies after a thorough search of them. A perfect poker face. Several independent investigations revealed that TikTok instructs its moderators to censor videos that mention issues like Hong Kong protests, Tibetan independence, or Tiananmen Square, where the government killed thousands of pro-democracy protesters in 1989. Moderators could straight out delete such content or ban their creators entirely or set their post an algorithmic black hole visible to self, which we in the YouTube sphere know as shadow banning. A Washington Post report found that if you were to search for hashtags Hong Kong protests or protesters, you would get an error message. Another search for hashtag Tiananmen Square, which is strictly censored in China, showed 20 videos, most of which joking the event never happened, which is the official narrative of the Communist Party. These moderation patterns gave some critics clues that Biden designed the TikTok mod rules to please the censorship requirements of the Chinese government that all Chinese companies must meet. Biden's officials claim TikTok moderation is free of the influence of the Beijing headquarters as well as the Chinese government. Indeed, TikTok is not available in the Chinese marketplace. But Biden's operates a Chinese version of TikTok, 
Dou Yin, and its obedient adherence to the rules of the ruling Communist Party is glaring. Dou Yin is strictly instructed by the Communist Party to censor posts about the treatment of Uyghurs, corruption in the party, and other topics that paint the Chinese government in a negative light. Similarly worded instructions can be found in the leaked TikTok moderation documents, where the mods are instructed to strike down content that is embarrassing to government authorities and their relatives, disrupts national unity, or uglifies or distorts national histories. That last one cites Tiananmen Square incidents as one such example. Broadcasting about state organs or documenting military or police activity would immediately get a user a full-day ban, thwarting the efforts of protesters to coordinate via TikTok. Similar practices apply to TikTok live streams, where moderators punish posts that harm national honor, defame civil servants, or might threaten national security. How moderators are supposed to determine which posts constitute such violations, like threats to national security, remains a baffling mystery. But these are strong hints at the true origin of TikTok moderation. Anonymous staffers blew a whistle on that TikTok's moderation guidelines do indeed originate in the Chinese headquarters that preside over the global operation of the company. The leaked content moderation documents were first written in Chinese, and then erroneously translated to English, suggesting a use of a machine translation tool. The biggest long-term issue with TikTok moderation it is that it has real-life political consequences. Dissenting speech isn't censored on TikTok just when it concerns issues specific to China. TikTok moderators take down all posts regarding independence movements, religious conflicts, or ethnic conflict between blacks and whites. And Chinese censorship has real consequences for people far away from Beijing. A US teenager was banned from TikTok after posting a video disguised as a makeup tutorial in which she criticized China's treatment of Uyghur Muslims. After a public backlash, the company later reinstated her account and issued an apology that this was simply a moderation error. The case of the banned US teenager might not just be an anomaly. China has demonstrated their ability to persuade US corporations to count out their censorship demands, including big names names like the NBA or Apple. Biden's is a Chinese company, and no startup in China gets to grow into a global superpower without the blessing of the Chinese Communist Party. TikTok made first huge headlines when it merged with Musical.ly in summer 2018, a lip-syncing app it had acquired for $1 billion. Shortly after that, the Federal Trade Commission launched a probe into TikTok for violating privacy of children. The app was found to be revealing sensitive information of children under the age of 13, including their email addresses, names in schools. It also failed to ask for parental permission to collect these data. Even when parents asked to have the data deleted, the company refused to comply. And perhaps the creepiest feature of all was that all accounts were public by default, and users on TikTok could contact anyone regardless of their age. For the time, the FTC slapped Biden's with a record $5.7 million fine for violating Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. But for the most valuable tech startup, this was nothing but a slap on the wrist. As a Chinese company, TikTok is obliged to follow China's cybersecurity law. Even when operating abroad, this law requires all network operators to allow Chinese crime and security investigators full access to their company and user data upon request. Like with censorship accusations, TikTok has always denied the claims that their users' data would ever be transferred to Chinese servers. But in November 2019, a California college student filed a class action lawsuit against TikTok for having her private data collected posted and transferred to China by TikTok without her consent. The lawsuit alleges the student downloaded TikTok in April, but never created an account. Months later, she found out TikTok has made an account for her, with a profile using her biometrics taken from the video she created, but never posted. According to the lawsuit, TikTok then transferred her personal data to servers in China. TikTok's privacy policy is extensively long and intentionally boring. The document might as well just say, we collect literally everything, we own you, bye. The app collects your location, unique device identifiers, operating systems, screen resolution, IP address, GPS, messages, metadata, you know, the whole nine yards. And they are selling this data to Google, Facebook or Twitter if you link or sign up with those accounts, possibly even without it. Who knows what trackers they are using in their proprietary app, and they will keep your data pretty much indefinitely. If you can, the best advice to follow would be to avoid platforms that have total control over your data and even livelihood. I have no social media accounts for my own use, and I use YouTube only for this channel. 
Sometimes, even I am losing sleep over YouTube's ability to erase me out of existence on a whim or due to a bug on their backend. The most private way of using social media apps on your phone is with progressive web apps. If you open your mobile browser and go to a website, you should be able to see the option to install it on your phone as a PWA. It will function normally with most of the features, but it will be significantly more restricted in terms of what data it can pull from your device. Platforms provide an attractive opportunity, but it comes at a great cost. You have to surrender to their terms and accept everything perfectly or risk being erased. It is an unfair relationship between owners of the platform and creators and users that give the platform its whole value. If you get outed as a creator from one platform, you might end up with no audience on another. If you don't like how a platform treats your user data or manipulates what content you can see, you won't be able to reach your favorite creators on different platforms. What we need is not a new platform that promises to be better. If we are looking to find a more long-term solution, we have to address the fundamental problem, and that is all of these platforms are centrally controlled. You have to ask for the platform's permission to join, the platform's permission to grow your audience, the platform's permission to earn revenue. At any point, the platform can unilaterally decide to revoke your permission to exist, and you can't do anything about it. The way it should be is to rather have all of these decisions made directly by users. We need to have all of these platforms to be using the same open standards so that users can be free to choose whom they interact with and subscribe to without a need to use the same apps. The closest project currently to this ideal is Matrix. Matrix is a new open standard for messaging apps. It can bridge different apps together on a unified protocol where, where all users can communicate directly and securely with end-to-end -end encryption. However, Matrix won't be able to scale unless we reform the restrictions on software and make everything open source. We need to be able to decentralize social media like TikTok or YouTube. If you are a TikTok creator, your only insurance policy in case things go wrong is to be running accounts on other social media apps simultaneously and hope your audience will go there with you. In an ideal system, you wouldn't have to ever worry about migrating because all platforms and apps would be built on the same open standard protocol that is permissionless and decentralized. Most of the practices discussed in this video aren't unique to TikTok. To their own extent, all Western platforms are guilty of the same wrongdoings. What we need to do going forward as users and creators on internet platforms is to call for them to be open source. Central control of software creates an unfair and unjust environment. Users and creators are treated as second-class citizens of this cyberspace and are held hostage to the whims of corporations and state power. Open source tech should not just be a niche market, it should be our new political message. Please support this channel on Patreon through crypto donations or by becoming a member. Thank you for your support.